In this video, we're going to talk about a new software function called Warp Engine within the Tangent Mapper for our Tangent Panels. One big problem that I know a lot of users in DaVinci Resolve had with the Tangent Panels is the inability to customize your own controls and place them where you'd like. Now with Warp Engine, we're able to customize functions and assign them to specific controls on the Tangent Panels and then switch back and forth between the supplied Resolve Map and our customized one. This opens up a whole new world of customization and you can even use it in any application. The features of Warp Engine are applicable to all applications and all tangent panels. We'll be producing another video tutorial on that in the future. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the tangent element panels in DaVinci Resolve and the Ripple panel and the Element VS iPad app would work in the same way. This is just step one. We'll be simplifying the interface and improving the capabilities over the coming months. We just wanted to get this out as soon as possible so that people could start to make use of it. One of the big limitations of the supplied resolve map is we have no way of controlling the offset control. To switch to the warp engine map, I press the A and B buttons at the same time. I am now in the warp engine map instead of resolve, and I would be able to adjust this like I was adjusting an offset wheel. Then I can press A and B again to switch right back to the standard resolve mapping. Essentially how Warp Engine does this is it allows you to program sequences of mouse movements and clicks and assign them to physical controls on the tangent panel. We've provided some example scripts of basic controls and all you need to do is input your specific screen coordinates to where those controls are in Resolve because everyone's screen resolution is slightly different. And once you do that, assign them in the tangent mapper to the physical controls on the panel. All right, with all of that said, let's dive in to actually making our first couple scripts and exactly how to do that. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you have the latest version of the tangent hub installed that has the warp engine. And once you have that, you can open the tangent mapper, go to warp engine right here and enable warp engine. This will come up and a text document will come up with some example scripts for us to try. So what we can do is go to this first example and copy and paste it so that we can make it our own. If I copy it, come all the way down below this line here and paste it, we can now rename it and make it our own to try out. I'll name that my button example and my primary color wheels example. Now these are the screen coordinates that we'll need to change in order for the script to work correctly. The move command will move your mouse pointer to the location you give. The S is short for screen coordinates, so the coordinates are measured from the top left corner of the screen. What this script is going to do is allow us to hit one button and go from any tab in Resolve to the color tab and open up the primary color wheels. So we have to come over into Resolve and find the screen coordinates for these things. If you're on a Mac, you can actually use Command, Shift, and 4 to bring up the screen coordinates of your mouse. On Windows, there are a few applications that can do it, and we'll try to link one below. So if we come over into Resolve, we need the screen coordinates for this color tab. If you mark those down and go back to the script, you can enter them now. The L means left mouse button, and C means click and release. Then on to the next button. We'll grab the screen coordinates and input those now. Again, the mouse clicks, and then we need to go over to the primary color wheels. So let's grab those coordinates and put those. Then the mouse clicks on that, and we're done with the script. So at this point, what we need to do is hit File and Save on this text document and go back over to our Tangent Mapper. If we open up that, we can go to the Warp Engine tab again, Reload Warp Engine. That just reloads the script file and allows us to now assign our script to a button. Let's assign it to this B button. If we go over to B, click on it, it will bring up this control mapping window. If we come down and click on this button here and go down to warp, we can now assign the script we just made to this button. So we click on that and come down to my primaries color wheels example. If we do that and close the window, it is now sitting on the B button. So let's go back to resolve and go into another tab like the edit tab. And right now we are in the warp engine mapping. If we were in the resolve mapping, we would need to hit the A and B to get into this first. But being in the warp engine mapping, all we need to do is click B and it clicks over to our color tab and instantly brings up our color wheels. So let's say maybe we were just in the HDR tab or, or some other tab and we're already in the color wheels. We can still hit B and it'll do all of that to bring us to the color wheel, the primary color wheels. So now that we programmed a script for a button, let's go ahead and program scripts 
for the offset color wheel to be on this gain wheel. So if we go back to our warp engine text document, we can go up to the second example, the ball example. Again, let's copy and paste this down below and start making it our own. My ball example, my primary color wheels offset ball example. Now this is a different set of controls in the script, but it's going to allow us to change the color ball. The first set of coordinates we'll need to find is the offset color wheel. So let's go over to resolve and go find the middle of the offset wheel coordinates and input those. This time the click command specifies LD, which means press the mouse button and hold it down. And then the loop tells the warp engine to repeat the next line until the user stops moving the tracker ball. The move R means move relative, and there's a negative one before the Y to invert the direction so it feels right. After the control stops moving, the loop ends and the mouse button is released. Now this reset is actually just going to be programming the reset button for the color wheel. So when we hit the button on the panel, it'll actually reset the color wheel. It's going to pause it for a time. This pause function is just to make sure that if you bumped the tracker wheel, it would give it a little time. But then we're gonna use these coordinates and find the reset button in Resolve and input those. It'll then click on that reset button and end the script. So again, let's go file, save, and back to the mapper and reload warp engine. So again, we need to now assign it. So we're gonna use the gain wheel. So if we come down to the gain section and click on this middle X axis and come over to the mapping and select warp again, we can then now select our my primary color wheels offset ball example. And let's label that offset ball. Now we need to do that for the Y axis as well. So if we click on this bottom one here and do the warp again, select our same example and change that also to offset ball. We can exit out of that. So we should be saving this along the way as we go in the mapper to save our progress. And once we do that, we can go back to resolve and test this out. We are already in the warp engine mapping and so we can go now and try to move the offset wheel. And as you can see, it is adjusting the offset on both the X and Y axis. And if I hit reset, it now moves the mouse over the reset button and selects it. If we're in the resolve mapping, if we try hitting B, it is again the bypass. And if we try adjusting this wheel, it is again the gain wheel instead of offset. So if we hit A and B to go back into our warp engine mapping, we now again have the offset wheel working just like we wanted. The only thing now would be to program the offset tracker ball ring. So if we again go back to our scripts and grab the example for the slider. If we copy and paste that to the bottom, we can start adjusting it. So now we'll find the coordinates for the center of the tracker ball ring. It will click the mouse, it will loop that until we're finished. And this move RX means it's only going to allow it to drag the mouse in the X direction because this is a slider. It will then exit the loop. This next section is to reset it like the other example, so we just need to put the coordinates of the reset button. Then it will click on the reset button and end the script. So if we save our changes and go back to the tangent mapper, warp engine, reload warp engine, we'll now just have to assign it. So if we go to this top one for the tracker ball ring, select no mapping, warp, and select our primary color wheels offset master example. And we can change that to offset master and exit out. We can save our progress. And now that will be displayed on the tangent panel screen. If we go back to resolve, we can adjust this ring and it now adjusts the offset master adjustment. That is one of the biggest functions that I know a lot of users really like to have. And so the warp engine is now allowing us to put it in such a quick and easy and accessible place on the panel, whereas before we just didn't have it accessible at all. And there are a number of other things that you can come up with, things that might be specific to your workflow or just controls that you would like to have really handy. You can just assign them to controls in the warp engine map and quickly adjust them and switch back to the resolve mapping at any time. Now it is also possible to program things to knobs, other buttons, and even mode changes. And all of that information on how to do those things are included in the manual for Warp Engine. It's even possible to map the entire color page of Resolve in Warp Engine, so you can have everything laid out exactly how you'd like it. But we're not gonna be able to cover that in this video. 
Now I'm going to explain just a few technical limitations of Warp Engine. The control has to be visible and must not move around on the screen at all, as that would change the screen coordinates of where it's located. Because it is using the mouse, you can only control one control at a time, and you must pause in between using two different controls. The control's handle must not be the only way of controlling that adjustment. Imagine moving a slider and that slider's position changes every time. We won't be able to use that as it always moves. The sequences that you program are only going to work with your specific layout and resolution. You can share these with others, but they will have to go in and input their own screen coordinates before it'll work for them. You also can't change any of the functions in the supplied resolve mapping. We can only adjust the warp engine mapping and switch between the two. Lastly, Tangent will not be supplying warp scripts and maps. You can use Warp Engine in any application, but you will have to supply those maps. I hope this helped introduce you to Warp Engine and get you started. Please look forward to future videos on other topics as we expand our functionality with this.